Good evening, River Church, Morocco, Indiana. Pastor Josh here tonight. We're back with our Bible study once again. We hope you're going to enjoy it with us tonight. We're going to be online with you here. We're going to be watching for your comments. I have. So if you see us looking down at our phones while we're doing this, we're not being rude. We're just trying to keep up with you at home as you keep up with us here at the River Church for our Wednesday night Bible study. That being said, um, once again, it is myself. It's uh, Pastor Josh, my wife, Jane. Jane, his wife. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> you just got it, didn't you? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. This is DJ Lay, one of the board members here, and his embarrassed <laughs> wife, Kathy, right over there. Got my job well. <laughs> You're not a you're not a husband unless you're embarrassing your children and your wife, right? Amen. Did you just say yes indeed? <laughs> what? I love you too, dear. <laughs> hello everyone via Facebook. Yes, everyone face on Facebook, hello. Linda's watching, so hug. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Um that being said, as I said, if as we go through the night, if you have a question, post it in there. We'll try to answer it. Um, I'm sure if Bonnie hops on, she'll definitely have a, a word or two to say. <laughs> that being said, let's go ahead and open the word of prayer, and we'll go over some announcements. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. It's Kathy's turn. You can pray if he wants. He's the pastor. <laughs> I was literally in the middle of a prayer. Please pray, Kathy. <laughs> Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time together and this time in your word, Lord. We ask you to just speak to us tonight and speak to the people who are watching on video. We thank you, Jesus, for everything you have done for us and for what you're going to reveal to us tonight. In your precious name, amen. 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 <laughs> All of that being said, <laughs> uh, we do have some announcements. This Friday um, on Jehovah Java, I'll be speaking with Charles Walters, uh, with Walters Ministries. He's out of South Carolina. Uh, he was on Brothers of Christ with my brother and myself a couple weeks ago. He's a great guy. He's been he's preached here at the River Church last November. Awesome man of God. Uh, it's going to be a good time with him. That's this Friday night at six thirty Central Time, seven thirty Eastern. That's six thirty Central, seven thirty Eastern Friday. This Sunday for Mother's Day, we are uh, we are going to be having drive-in church out in the, um, the the front yard again. So come on and drive on up. We'll help you park and then have some church. Have some church. Amen. Trick your mom. Say you're going for a Sunday drive and bring her to church. <laughs> Although in most cases, it's usually mom tricking the kids, kids. saying let's kids. go for a Sunday drive. <laughs> and then afterwards, go to Arby's. Because <laughs> that's the only place that's open, right? <laughs> Arby's, there you go. Um, next Wednesday night. Next Wednesday night, um, we're, we're in the planning stages. Um, we're also in a transition church-wise where we're looking at getting into a building again. We'll have more information on that. Please stay plugged into Facebook so you can get that information. But we're looking at next Wednesday night. Um, if we if we're not into a building yet, we are going to um, have um, weather permitting. We're gonna have a Bible study on the back deck of Sam and Betty Kennedy at their house. Uh, if you've been there, it's really awesome. The youth will have an area where they will meet, and um, they'll be able to do what youth do. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that um, we're trying to get into a building for next Wednesday night. But um, worst case scenario, as long as it's good weather, we will be meeting outside on the back deck of Sam and Betty's. May 17th, we are going to have a guest speaker here, Ed Corbin from Branson, Missouri. Ed Corbin's an amazing man of God, awesome, powerful um, speaker. He's been a missionary uh, to Africa for over 27 years. Um, I'm thanking God that we're able to have him come on up here, um, that we're coming to the end of all this COVID-19 um, virus, whatever. So um, he's going to be here Sunday, May 17th. We're going to meet actually in the backfield instead of the front. We're going to meet in the back behind the church. 
bring your lawn chairs, bring a picnic blanket, bring a cooler. We're going to have church and afterwards, if you want to, hang out and have a picnic. We will be following social distancing rules still, okay? We still have to follow those at least till the 24th of May minimum, okay? So we'll still be following social distancing, but we're going to all have church together. <laughs> I got Brett making faces back there behind the camera. And, and the, the, the state has said that with, for church social distancing, it can be by family group. So it yes. doesn't have to be between six feet between each individual person, six feet in between each individual family group. So my wife, myself, and our three kids can be in one area. Six feet away can be Kathy, DJ, and their family. Six feet away, so on and so forth. So bring your lawn chairs, bring a picnic blanket, bring a, a cooler with a picnic in it, and come have church May 17th, 10.30 a.m. And the, the focus of that is going to be family, family and children. Family and children. Um, Ed has an amazing uh, children ministry, and he believes that kids are not the church of the future, they're the church of now. So we need to get them in the power of God and the Holy Spirit now. And I love it. It's awesome. It it's is very engaging. Very engaging. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into this week's Bible study on transitional seasons. Um, let's see, we've, um, we've been talking about transitions. Transitions can go small, short. Transitions can be long. Linda, one big family. No, Linda, we don't get to all get into one big. <laughs> no, she's missing her hugs. <laughs> When we practice family social distancing, it's not one big family we all get to share. We, we still, we, family units, Linda. Anyway, um, we've been talking about transitional seasons and going through transitions in life. And that's, what's amazing is, and we're getting ready to share some about that here, um, but this is a, um, something that the whole country, the whole world is going through, a new transition. Um, it's where it's changes. Things are changing and um, we can either adapt and continue to spread the gospel or we can get stuck not being able to share the gospel. I'd rather preach the gospel, not compromise the gospel, still preach it. But as I've always said, um, I'm not driving a Model A anymore because it doesn't make sense in the world we live in today with the speed limits, what they are, and the gas mileage, so on and so forth. Um, I don't expect us to spread the gospel the same way that we did 60 years ago. Um, it's time for an updated car to carry that same gospel. Never change the gospel, never compromise the gospel, but go through transitions into that next newer model. Amen? That being said, uh, for the people here at the table and at home, answer this question if you'd like. Do you have an example in your life where you felt like you've been in a transition for a long period of time in your life? DJ. I was actually kind of thinking my wife was going to take that one, but that's okay. Well, but you get an answer you first. An answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first, right? <laughs> um, do I have an example? Um, yeah, I guess overall, I would say just as an overall Christian, my, my walk in faith, it's just been one very big ongoing transition i'm always uh i'm learning something new you know um i'm i mean god's word's a living word so every Amen. time you read it so you get something new out of it you know, you know so so it, it's been a constant change uh it's definitely been a lot of uh adaptation Amen. um i've walked away from a lot of old stuff in my life that uh, uh that i used to be the norm for me i mean I, uh, I changed things from uh, some of the musical taste to even uh, how my friends and, and and stuff that I that I hang out with. I mean, we're still friends. We still talk, but I don't hang out with them like I used to. You know. Amen. So. Amen. And uh, we, it, it, it's been that alone's been a big change for us. So, you know, or for me because it's just like I said, like you're not the same. Guy, you know, because <laughs> they they didn't know me. They only knew me before, you know, uh, Christ got a hold of me. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Um, your daughter, Jasmine, said, yeah, my marriage. <laughs> That's, That's a big old change. Big old change. And now I see where her husband, Dane, just He's logged just in watching. to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about you, Kathy? Okay. I, I um, actually talked with my husband before I gave this answer. Don't think that he doesn't know. <laughs> um, when we first became Christians, we were in our early 30s. I mean, we both kind of grew up in the church, and we knew, you know, about God, but when we actually became Christian, we were married for five years, we had four kids, <laughs> and we, uh, um, you know, it was baby Christians in our 30s, and so I kind of followed his lead, um, because, to be honest, our family at the time was going through a hard time, and he went to Christ first. Thank you to... Pastor Jim and to his dad, um, and then I followed, somewhat kicking and screaming. <laughs> but um, so the first several years of being a Christian, I sort of followed his lead and you know battled my own stuff, but I followed his lead. Well, over the last few years, we hit a kind of a, a, a wall. He struggled big time in his faith, and he even pretty much walked away for a while. He wasn't coming to church. He was done. He was burnt out, frustrated, hurt. And that left me in a very um, interesting position because I, suddenly it wasn't really healthy to follow his lead. And so I had to not only deal with my own stuff that was going on, but figure out how I was going to follow God and what it would look like when it wasn't following his lead. Mm -hmm. So it had to become my own. And maybe this is something that, you know, most kids that grow up in the church, they face this at some point. But when you come to it as an adult, you think it is your own. And you don't realize that sometimes you're leaning on other people, maybe mm -hmm. more than you should. I know as a wife, we're supposed to follow our husband's lead. And we're supposed to, I'm you know. glad you didn't. <laughs> but <laughs> when it's unhealthy, you can't. Exactly. And so it took... A while of me battling it out in my mind and my heart and talking with other people who have been through it and you know going what do I do here how do I you know yeah I don't pray for him but you know I'm I'm a mess right now because my anchor is not there the way he's supposed to be and then I would look at my little girl and I knew I had to do what was best for her yes and so you know there was the Sundays of coming to church without him many, many Sundays, months of Sundays, and, you know, my little girl going, but how come daddy's not coming, and I want daddy to come, and being upset, and me trying to explain to her without damaging yes. him, um, and if anybody knows, <laughs> and that was very difficult for me, because I'm kind of a jump in and get it done type person, and I couldn't fix this. <laughs> I couldn't, you know, when you've got a large family, stuff has to get done, and I'm the one there, you jump in and do it, and I couldn't fix this. I couldn't fix what was wrong with him. I couldn't change his heart, and I had to back off, and that is very hard for me. <laughs> He's agreeing. It is very hard for me because, you know, I'm like, surely there's something I can do, something I can say that would just, that would fix it, that would change things, and there wasn't. It had to be God dealing with his heart. And, you know, now, looking back, he's talked about it. He's even preached about it. But, you know, it was a situation I had to step back from. And I'm glad I did and was glad to told I was told to. And just pray about it. And God has redeemed it. But, it, you know, that time, that period, I had to build my relationship with God, even if it was me by myself without my husband mm -hmm. in here with me. I think that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, <laughs> you know, because, you know, you just think he's always going to be there with me in this, and then he wasn't, and I was lost, you know, I was, for a while I was lost, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do, how I was supposed to be, you know. So you had the transition of not just, number one, you had the transition of realizing my walk needs to be my walk and not my husband's walk. 
right. or some other family members, but you also have the transition of now I'm the spiritual head of the house and the transition of I had to continue going to church and bringing my family and my husband's not with me. So it was actually like a multifaceted oh, transition yeah, for you. Oh, lots of facets. <laughs> there's lots of facets. Yeah. But in a way, I, I, I grew close with many, um, many women, several of them who are probably even watching, who were in similar situations at one time or even are still in similar situations. And now I can say I get it and I get how hard it is because I don't remember if you remember the statistic you told me, but how many families will follow along when the dad follows Christ, but how much harder it is when it's just the mom. And uh, I don't remember the number, but it, it is... Big it's mind blowing. Yeah, it, like a sixty percent differential yeah, almost. Yeah, it's like something like sixty percent. If the father attend, is a believer, the whole family will follow. If it's just the mother, I think it's something like maybe thirty. I think seventy-eight percent. If the man is following God, seventy-eight percent of the rest of the family will follow God too. Yeah. <clears throat> but if it's the wife, as you said, the mother, it drops down to like thirty percent. Yeah, uh-huh. which then, shows you the influence that <clears throat> he has in a family. Yes. You know and. As a mom, you can just pray, oh, God, <laughs> I, I can't I can't step in the shoes. Of God. I can't fill those shoes. Yes. You know, and it literally became of, okay, this is what it is, God. That became my phrase for a long time. It is what it is, God. You do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept trying to plug away. And there's days where I didn't want to plug away. But I just kept plugging away, coming, coming to church, bringing my kid, you know, trying to stay connected. And God worked it. Amen. Amen. Jane. Well, um, just the what we're going to talk about tonight is just a, a kind of a testimony about the Callens, how we, <laughs> our long journey from Georgia to Indiana, <laughs> and how you know we got here. And so this study is not necessarily birthed out of just COVID-19, you know, you know, this is why we're doing it. I actually, you know, uh, prepared this study back in the summer of 2017. Um, we had just moved from Georgia to Illinois. We actually still had our stuff stuck inside our moving truck. Because, Parked across the street in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, we thought the house that we had lined up was ready, and it wasn't ready. And so our basically our stuff was all stuck in a Penske truck. And, um, and we walk into my brother-in-law's house, and he goes, hey, guys, welcome. And he said, uh, hey, Jane, by the way, um, in a couple weeks, you're going to be teaching Sunday school, and it's going to be about transitional seasons. Um, transitional seasons. Real quick, for all of those here at the River Church, you're welcome. I have not done what my brother uh-huh. did, which was if you're an adult in this church, you take at least two to three weeks of uh, teaching Sunday school. So, you're welcome. Maybe, eventually. <laughs> For now. For <laughs> now. <laughs> but, um, and, and so I'm like, transitional seasons. And so I had to start, you know, studying it and figuring out, well, what's the difference between transitional and a season and all that, which we'll cover later. Um, but basically, the testimony is, is that I felt like I've been in constant transition since I had my first son, which he's six now. So, you know, that's how long this has been going on. Um, you know, at that time, it was just about this change that, you know, I felt God was wanting uh, for us and our family. I had Joshua, but I was also a middle school teacher, and I just felt while I was at school teaching that I just needed to be home with my son, which being a teacher, that's a great career to have if you're going to be a mother because you got the weekends, you got the same school schedule, you've got summers off, you know, you can get home at 3, 30, 4 o'clock if needed, you know, all those things, but I just felt like I was failing. Um, you know, I, you know, the first year he stayed with my mom and my sister and, you know, it was pretty great. I, you know, thought it worked out very well. The next year I found out I was pregnant with Juliana and we had to put him in daycare and I would drop him off at seven and on a good day I'd pick him up at five <laughs> and then we'd go home, I'd cook dinner, 
feed dinner, and then I'd be like to him and say, okay, you gotta take the baby, I have to do, I have to grade 180 pages, papers, or I have to fill out this paperwork, or I'm gonna get in trouble at work. And I just felt like I was given 100% to everything, but I was given 60% to teaching and 60% to <laughs> parenting. And if you're a teacher, you know 60% is a failing grade. So <laughs> I just felt like I was just failing at this. And, you know, um, and before I had the kids, I was doing extracurriculars like running the yearbook, which I still was doing that, but I wasn't doing a good job at it. Running the yearbook, doing all these other things. And I just was, you know, all over the place. And so I just felt like I was failing. Which, um, quite often in a time of transition you're going to have feelings like you're failing at whatever it is you're doing whether it's life your relationship with god um there's an old saying and i was just actually sharing it before um, we we came on tonight with everyone here which is sometimes you got to hit rock bottom so that you can look up and see god yeah. <laughs> uh uh, I've had people say, well, why didn't God intervene beforehand? Look at them. They're about to hit rock bottom. I'm like, well, how do you know God hasn't tried to intervene? Some of us are really smart and know what's going on. And so, you know, we hit rock bottom before we look to God because we've got it all figured out. Um, and, it, you know, we you, sometimes you have to reach that point before you're even going to be at a position where God can move you or use you. Um, people will... People will change, accept change, and go forward with change when the pain of sitting still is greater than the pain of change. And uh, that's just human beings. That's who we are because we don't like change. Some people are all about change, constant change. But, you know, I have yet to find the TV show called New Stuff Person. But there's plenty <laughs> of TV shows about hoarders and people who don't want to let go and change. Sure. Am I wrong? You're very true. <laughs> Have you ever felt like you were failing at life, but God used that as a way to make you move or change? Kathy. Um, every time one of my kids seems to hit a new phase, and <laughs> oh, Jesus, <laughs> I have five daughters, and you would think I would be used to it. I'm on the fifth one, and she's, you know, new phase, and I'm like, huh. And you know, I was like, what is this? And how do I deal with it? And I should know, but I don't. It's, it's, every kid's different. Every phase is different. Yes. You know. What about you, DJ? Yeah, like my wife. Uh, <laughs> kids. <laughs> you, you love them, but yeah, sometimes they're just like, where did you come up with that? <laughs> and then I talk to my mom and it's like, oh. That's where she got it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> we can't just blame you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, for me, it, it, it's, it, it is. It's, it's the same thing. Um, um, my walk in faith is probably always going to be the biggest one. Because when I had that, uh, that downtime for the past year or so, um, I, I know I was failing as a parent. You know, I was not the support that my wife needed. I was not the support that my children needed. And uh, I mean, I know I failed the church as well. Um, but I mean, I know, I don't know, I mean, yeah, God has definitely used it and he's still using it as a way to, uh, to, to help me. And or I don't want to say make me move, but definitely help me move. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure God's one of the type of people is like, all right, <laughs> you like yeah, pretty much. Cattle <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so you know, but he's he's using it to, to to help me move in the forward position and stop standing still because, like you said, it got too painful to stand still. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. And at that point, sometimes it's that you're like you rock bottom or you're too painful to stand still. At that point. Uh, the only answer is Christ at that point. Amen. Not, you know, you realize, okay, my own my own volition will not do this. Yes. You know, that I, our God, you can basically give it to God at that point. Yes. Yep. Amen. Um, well, at the same time Jane was going through all this, I was going through it a little bit myself, too. Um, I've known since I was eight years old I was going to be a minister. 
I felt the calling on God in my life at that time. Um, even I had some years where I kind of ran from God, but I'll, I'll never forget. I would be doing stuff that I shouldn't be, you know, um, doing my best to run away from God. But in all that, I would be in the process of hanging out with friends, doing stuff. And I'd always in the back of my head, like, no, I don't want to do that because I'm going to be a minister one day and I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> but at the same time, I'd be telling myself, shut up, do what you want to do. You don't have to be a minister. You know, I had this internal struggle going on. Um, I finally yielded um, back to God, yielded my life back to God and started working with my dad in church. And now I know a lot of people would be like, I don't think I would ever want to work with one of my parents at the church. We had our struggles. We had our time, especially early on. We, we found a way to work through it. Um, a lot of people, I, I had siblings who would laugh about it, but like one thing that we had to do was he would refer to me as Pastor Josh, I would refer to him as Pastor, you know, or he'd refer to me as Brother Josh, I would say Pastor and Pastor Cowan. And people were like, well, that's your dad, just call him dad. I'm like, it's something I had to do when I went to church so that I wouldn't act like a kid with their dad. And it was a tough transition for me just for that. But I'll never forget, and I've told the story plenty of times, my dad asked me to, um, my pastor asked me to fill in <laughs> as a worship leader for four weeks. And I'm like, yeah, I can do four weeks, but, you know, I got other stuff I got to do because I'm going to be a pastor, you know. Well, 20 years later <laughs> was my last Sunday as worship leader, and that's when we drove to Illinois. So um, I spent... 22 plus, almost 24 years working in the church with my dad. Um, 20 years in actual ministry, you know, a ministerial aspect of leading worship and working as his associate pastor. And, um, you know, everyone, every time I'm like, well, you know, I can't really, I don't want to really dedicate myself because I know in just at any time now, God's going to call me out of here to be a pastor. And then when he finally did call us out, he didn't call me out to be a pastor. So, you know, I was wrong on a lot of accounts with that. But for me, that was literally a 22-year transitional period. And trust me, I had my moments of just, there were times that I'm like, I would look at a position at church and I'd interview and I'd even go speak. And I'm like, that, this is it. I'm going. Praise God, Finally. And I'd get there, and they'd either say no, or I'd get there, and, and as soon as I walk through the door, I'm, God's yelling in my ear, no, leave, what are you doing? You know, So I, I had my moments, but um, I kept waiting for it to happen, waiting for it to happen, waiting for it to happen. And I reached a point finally where, I, where, not that God was doing that beforehand, but I reached a point where God said, okay, I don't want you to wait anymore. I want you to start pursuing it. I want you to come after me. Now, it doesn't mean that every... I, I didn't just sit there and blast my resume out to as many churches as possible either. I was always prayerful, but I was pursuing God. And in the process of pursuing God, he walked me through a process of different places where I would talk to them as far as becoming pastor till I reached this point, um, which is Morocco which is where every minister dreams of coming to, a yeah. town of 1,200 people <laughs> in farm country. No, I, I honestly, I do, I do love you here. I love the people. What's better than the fire pit around Sam and Betty's house at night? Let me tell you. <laughs> Y'all two got in right. on that. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Let me tell you. And they have, a, they, have a, they have a saying, if the lights are on on the back deck, come on by, the fire's going. So, um God brought us here, and it was only through pursuing him that I reached the point where we got here. And I, I, I've told them all here this too. Um, I had reached a point long before I ever came and interviewed with anyone or preached or anything where I, I decided in my heart, I'm like, God, I know that's where you want me. I don't care what the vote is as long as according to the bylaws of that church, if I'm voted in, I'm taking it. And it's been an adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tasha, oh. <laughs> it's been an adventure. But um, there were times things went fast. I've told the story here many times when we were moving. We put our house on the market Friday at noon. Then at 6.30, she received a, at that evening, she received a, um, 
a, uh, a bid on the house. The next morning when she called us with the bid, we were literally in our vehicle driving up here <laughs> um, to Illinois, actually, uh, just to visit because um, I was going to go to Ireland yeah. with my brother for Ireland for Jesus with Dr. Horvath and that whole group. And um, we were on our way to Carthage. We were going to stay the night in Carthage, um, preach that Sunday morning because my brother was already in Ireland. I was going to fill in for him. Then we were going to hit the airport in Chicago and fly to Ireland. And I'll never forget it. We're driving up here. She's like, well, the house is sold if you want it to be. And we're like, what? Praise God. <laughs> you know? She's like, it was on the market six and a half hours. Praise God, you know? And she's like, I was supposed to get back from Ireland. I think it was June 15th. And she's like, they want to know if they can close June 17th. I'm like, no. <laughs> we're, we're not even, we're nowhere near being packed or ready to be packed. We cannot close on June 17th. So that felt like, like fast forward, like, wow, no way, man. But, um. God moved. It was awesome. And we found out at the closing, um, the, the, the one lady, the one um, realtor said, now you're a pastor, a minister, right? I go, yes, I'm a minister. She's like, I got to tell you, they came in, they walked in the house, and the gentleman wasn't there, but his wife was there. And she corroborated the story. He said he was in the house for two minutes and looked, his wife, and looked at the realtor and said, you said this man's a minister? And she's like, yes, yes, sir, he is. He goes, God wants us to buy this house. Like, praise God, you know, and just there's a whole adventure of what how that happened. But we eventually moved up here to Carthage, Illinois. Shout out to everyone in Carthage. Um, if anyone's watching or if anyone does watch, Davis and Laura watch sometimes. Sometimes uh, Darlene Brink Schroeder watches and Jackie Schaefer. If you guys are watching, hey, we miss you guys. Marianne, Grandma Sandy, my kids miss you. Joshy misses you. Anyway, um. But that being said, things went very fast at times, and things just seemed like it was a crawl. And I'm like, what year is it? She said, Tuesday. You know, just... <laughs> We're in that right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are saying about COVID-19. April was the longest year of my life. Yeah, I don't know what day it is. Longest decade of my life. But, um, and then other times, um, it's, a, it's a saying that I've learned from family members that have been in the military other times it was hurry up and wait. <laughs> hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. <laughs> so um, that's kind of my side of the story. Mm -hmm. And you had a rough six years. I've had a rough 22, 22 45, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so praise God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about, you know, selling the house and all that too. But just the, you know, God, what God wanted us to do. It just to finally, I think when we finally submitted to God, God started to <laughs> lay out, okay, this is going to happen. And no, it's not going to be perfect, okay? When you submitted to God. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's not going to be perfect, okay? Because, you know what, we we're, we're, did, we're doing what God wanted us to do, but we had to live in a camper for 109 days, okay? <laughs> so... So when you do what God wants you to do, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to all just, you know, puzzle pieces all land in one spot. And talking about not being perfect, as he just said, those 109 days of camp where our kids are like, this is great. Can we make the camp for our house? Yeah. And we're like, no. <laughs> just think of the memories you made with your children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, have, we have I used to like you, DJ. <laughs> Go ahead. But so when I started um, preparing the study and reflecting on long transitional seasons and everything, I was able to identify some things that was needed to help make progress, um, both the physical and the spiritual. So that's the question I have. So what, are, what do you think are some things that you need to have or things that you need to do in a transitional season to make progress? <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, for me, during the transitions I've been in, especially over the last couple of years, um, a solid time of prayer and devotion with God. Come on. <laughs> because if you don't have that, you're kind of everywhere. And then definitely find wise or wiser believers. <laughs> wise counsel. <laughs> wise counsel. People that you know are going to be 
honest with you, but are godly and 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 are in the word themselves and want you know have your best interest at heart. <laughs> yes, definitely. Absolutely. DJ, do you have anything you? Well, I'm going to back my wife up on that one. Um, not just because she's my wife, but it's oh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> because it's an easy it's answer. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, like like she said, she's right. Uh, uh, prayer. Lots of it. Because uh, it helps keep your, your mind and your heart set right. Um, a lot of transition and stuff like that, it's... It, it's not only uh, it's a, not just a heart thing, but it's, it's a mind thing, you know. And and uh, um, I think you read a book once called Battlefield of the Mind. Oh, yeah. You know, I mm, mean, yes. So you know, and what your heart it, it desires, you know, you know, it's what you're going to dwell on. So uh, if if you're constantly bathing yourself in prayer, you know, and spending time with God, seeking wise counsel, which you can't get no wiser than than the Alpha and the Omega, right? Come on. <laughs> Come on. You know, and he guides your steps. He keeps you encouraged, and, and he keeps building your hope. And we all know from experience um, there's some transitional periods where it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. This is like this <laughs> yeah. a really long tunnel. Sometimes you wonder if the transition period is the new normal. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Exactly. Right. Are we in the new so, prayer, uh, prayer, a lot of prayer. Yeah, well, and the part of what you said was like the desire of the heart and the mind or whatever, that prayer will help you with that. Because, well, just in our situation, like you said, that you could have blasted your resume out to 200 different churches and you could have, we could have ended up anywhere. Um, you know, we had places that were interested and everything. We had a lot of rejection too, but a lot of places that were interested and everything. But, and, you know, it, our desire was, hey, full-time ministry, he's called to be a lead pastor, we could have taken, you know, A, B, C, or D, but you know what, A, B, C, and D were not the right places. Amen. So, but we could have uh, compromised or forced our own way or done what we wanted, what we wanted instead of what God wanted and ended up in the wrong situation. Well, at that point, it had been a career, not a calling. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, ooh, that's a good there's a good difference there. Big difference. <laughs> There's a good, big difference there. That that's kind of sounds like a little bit like like we said I think last week where we talked about uh, you know kind of helping God's plan. Yes. Yeah. 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 It didn't work so well for the for the Israelites. That's why they spent forty years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forcing it. Um, we had. Uh, uh, Becky said the church is always transitioning, whether new pastors, new studies, etc. Um, Tasha agrees prayer is important. Um, Dane says you need child grows. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure there's some spiritual application to that. There's a very important truth right there. You need to recognize and realize when it's time to get bigger diapers for that baby. Because otherwise you're going to have a mess. <laughs> that will preach right there. Come on. Here we go. All right. um, but anyway, uh, so in true Bible studies fashion, I have seven Ps seven of a transitional P's. season. Seven meaning? Perfect. God's yeah. number. <laughs> so, Because originally I had only six. And he's like, you can't have six. That's the flesh. So yeah, I had to come up with seven. I came up with seven. Completion. Completion. <laughs> Completion. <laughs> and uh, all P's, which means alliteration, which all of you Teacher. teachers and reading teachers and reading people love that. Yes, P's. So, of course, Works. the first one was prayer, um, which we covered with is. them. Is. I'm sorry. Not the was. first one is, is. prayer. <laughs> That's number one. Um, and what personally what we did is that we prayed together as a couple. Which, let me interject. I know um, okay, go ahead. if you are married and you are not praying together as a couple, you're dooming your marriage and you're dooming your walk with God. You need to have your own prayer. You need to pray as a couple. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. So we would pray as a couple um, about the situation and also just pray together just to get that close relationship to each other and to God. Um, We would pray separately. Um, Sometimes it felt like we'd pray separately, but like, so did you hear anything yet? Did God tell you anything? Yes. (laughs) Um, Nothing, not a nudge. Yeah. Are you sure? 
We'll um, make a pray again. Yeah. <laughs> um, we prayed with the uh, intercessory prayer warriors um, that we knew who were outside the situation. Um, you know, because if somebody is maybe in the situation, they, you know, they may counsel you about it, but they may not, they may be doing what they think is the right answer. And so we would find somebody, we had somebody that was living up here and over in Illinois that when we were living in Georgia, she, had, she has no, she has no idea what goes on in our personal lives daily. Mm -hmm. It's all what God, you know, her and God. Um, so intercessory prayer warriors to help you. Um, to guide, to, you know, to guide you. Um, uh, real quick, also, uh, Angie, Angela Whistle on Facebook says, you ended up with the best church family ever, and you even got Bonnie. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me. <laughs> I love Bonnie. We'll be coming around the corner in a few days. <laughs> <laughs> this week. This week, okay. <laughs> uh, um, thank We love you, Bonnie. Uh, that being said, um, you can never, ever, ever pray enough. Praying to God is like when you, ever, you hear people talk about what you're giving. You can never outgive God. You can never pray enough. Your life, your marriage, your children, your ministry, your church family needs to be bathed in prayer. Yes. Um, and the reason why I put it that way is because this: when you break it down, nobody in this world, uh, well. I guess you can't say nothing's 100%. There aren't enough people doing enough prayer in this world. How about that? Um, I, I assure you, most people I know, probably about 98% of the people I know could do with a whole lot more prayer than what they're already doing. So um, you can never pray enough. Bathe your, bathe your church, your family, your marriage, your own life. Um, if you're a minister, bathe your ministry in prayer. You can never pray enough. Uh, and uh, let me tell you, becoming a pastor really drove that home for me. I'm like, praise God, <laughs> you know. So, um, go, I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> Did anybody have any uh, I had a, a scripture verse actually that come up with that kind of what we've been hitting okay. on. Uh, it was uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, where it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition. Oh, that's uh, good. Yeah, I, I like that too. And apparently my dad did because he has it highlighted. <laughs> but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Amen. So, which you guys are doing your transition period. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We also talked about, you know. Amen. And, you know, they're transforming your mind during that transition period. Absolutely. Praise God on that. It's kind of funny because um, during our uh, morning time at, at home, because we have morning time with Megan and Tasha's been joining, and we've been reading about George Mueller. <laughs> and George Mueller was a missionary and an evangelist who decided he was going to depend solely on prayer to provide for his needs and provide for everything. And you think, when, as you're reading this, you, as he's making these decisions of, I'm not going to take a salary from the church. I'm just going to you know, allow people to give what they feel and, and the miraculous way God provided. And you're sitting here thinking as he's making the choices, this guy's crazy. And yet then you see what God does. And he opened an orphanage, correct? He opened orphanages. Yeah. He yes. Opened, yeah. <laughs> but yes, it, it, it's people that live trusting God and based on prayer. They're, they're inspiring. Yes. So inspiring. Well, our second P, <laughs> number two, second P is purpose. Um, and pastor purpose as a minister especially <laughs> as a youth pastor the amount of times I heard kids why am I here what does God want for me what is my purpose in life first and foremost if anyone asks you what the meaning of life is and what their purpose is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 quick simple easy let us hear the end of the matter Keep God, I mean, love God and keep his commandments, for this is the full duty of man. I love that when people say, what's the meaning of life? Oh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. I, that's an easy one. <laughs> I come up with the meaning of life like that. But um, you need to understand, um, you need to understand what your purpose is. You need to know where, where what God has called you to. Because, like for myself, like I said, I know that God called me at the age of eight. I knew where God was taking me. 
And that's what helped bring me through a lot of that. I understood my calling. My calling was to be a pastor. I knew it. I understood it. I embraced that purpose. And because of that, there were times that were really rough, but I, I leaned into God. I dug in more into prayer. I said, God, I know what you, I know what I know what I know that you called me to. And I know what my purpose is. Get me through this. Um, I knew my calling was um, for full-time ministry. Uh, and what's funny is I, I remember the first time I mentioned that to my dad, I was like, well, you're in full-time ministry. Look how much time you put. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know. Because I don't have a full-time girlfriend. But <laughs> then eventually came along. <laughs> and then I met my wife. <laughs> And I became a full-time minister. <laughs> Are you having fun, DJ? <laughs> I, I can back you up on many things, but I don't, I don't think I can help you on this I'm one. I'm all alone on this one. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, and then once I met my wife, you know, things were great. And then we had our first child. They're still great. <laughs> but now I understand what being a full-time parent is. Um, our purpose had changed beforehand when it was just me by myself man let me tell you something if i decided i wanted to take a trip somewhere especially when i wasn't dating anyone hop in the car let's go you know why not <laughs> nothing better to do then i got married it's like hey babe let's hop in the car and go and she's like okay cool yeah i knew if i was like hey it's fall let's go up to the mountains of georgia ride on a train and look at at fall leaves <laughs> <laughs> We can find a way to make that fit the budget. If I said, hey, I want to go down and see a baseball game, Braves versus Cardinals, man, that was a little more. Cardinals usually won, though, I'm going to say. Um, but that being said, once we become parents, our purpose changed. We couldn't just hop. We, we still did a lot of the stuff we did, but we couldn't just, you know, it's like having a puppy. You're like, if I go for a long trip, I either got to take the puppy with me or I got to find a way to take care of the puppy. Well, when you have a child that's under the age of one, ain't nobody wanting to watch that puppy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're like, I got him for a couple hours. But we had to understand our purpose. When we had children, we realized our purpose changed. No longer is my purpose making sure I have what I need and I'm good and I can do without. Now my purpose was I had to provide for this child. I had to provide, when I got married, my purpose changed. I realized it's not just me anymore. I had to provide for my wife and myself, you know, and we're in this together. I can't just make a decision on my own anymore. We're in this together. I talk about it with my wife now. Um, when I, it, you know, when I was in, when, as I've been in full-time ministry all these years, um, there were times like, hey, that's a really cool idea. Let's do it. But God's telling me, no. I had a responsibility. My purpose was to not just do what was cool and great and sounded awesome, but to do what God was calling me to do. And there were plenty of times that I heard something, people were like, and it was a great idea. I'm like, that's really cool. I'd love to, but no, God's telling me no. And then, of course, you got to deal with people like, well, why not? It's really great. It would do. It. I'm like, you are absolutely right, but I'm getting a no from God, so it's no. <laughs> Um, so you have to figure out what your purpose is, what your calling is, and then God's going to take you through that. And you have to, it, it's, it's just, there's a process and, and everything goes along with it. But it starts off with number one, prayer in your life. Number two, recognizing your purpose, your calling and what, what you're here for. Okay. Um, so that being said, Kathy, yes. what is your purpose in God? I think it changes. I, I, I know the, the correct teacher answer is going to be souls. <laughs> but I think it changes for me personally. Right right now, it's a, it's a definite time of me um, becoming back to being more intimate with him. And, and, you know, I feel like I've spent the last couple of years doing a lot of book work. <laughs> Not only with you know college classes, but it, it with you know book work with Bible, and right now I think he's taking me kind of just to draw closer to him in this time. Actually, um, I love that answer because 
there's that overarching purpose that we all have, which is bringing souls into the kingdom of God. You're absolutely correct about that. But what is your individual way in which God wants you right. to fulfill that? And I love the way you put that. Yes, souls. Absolutely. Teacher answer. It's, that's definitely it. <laughs> but that being said, um, you know, some people can't get up and preach in front of them. I know people who can sit there and write something out that sounds amazing and awesome. They're like, hey, why don't you hop up and, um, you know, and preach this or something? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I can't do that. No, don't ask me to speak. I know people in this church now who know a lot about God, know the Word of God, have a great prayer life, and say, would you mind praying in front of the church? And it's just like... <laughs> deer and headlights. <laughs> you know, clams up, mouth shut, deer and headlights, whatever it might be. So you have to know not just the overarching purpose of the church, but what is your individual purpose. How about you, DJ? I could take the uh, homeschooling students, answer that, and say, <laughs> answer's God. <laughs> God, love, Jesus, God. <laughs> Bible. That's what our kids always say every time. God. <laughs> yeah. Because he's God. Because he's God. Um, I, I, again, and maybe it's because it's me and my wife have been together for 20 years, but like she said, it's it's to draw in closer. Yes. Um, like you guys have shared on your Monday nights, uh, to your brother said, to, to become more intimate. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, I actually kind of like that. Uh, you know, it's real catchy. Even the, the more you think about it, the more I, I hear it play over and over, you know, in my ears. You know, to become more intimate. Uh, and knowing God, what he wants, you know, because I, myself, I believe that if I press into him, obviously his word says he's going to press into me. Yes. And then from there, he'll show me, okay, this is what, this is where I want you to go next. Or this is what, you know, I, I, I would like to see done. Um, and just keeping my heart wide open for him at all times. I guess for me personally, right now, that would be my sole purpose, so that he could use me the way that he desires to use me. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Um, you know what? Um, we're getting close to the end here, but real quick before we close, Jane, what about you, your purpose? That's not my notes. <laughs> <laughs> the instant in season, out of season. Thank you, Pastor James Cowan Sr., my dad, who trained me on that one. Um, well, Other than being my wonderful, beautiful wife. Your helpmate. <laughs> um, you know, well, just, you know, my, I think my purpose right now is um, get my kids <laughs> to prepare them and teach them about the Lord so that when it's time for them to make their decision for yes. Christ that they're ready um, you know and just focus on the family and, and do that besides the things that would, I would need to do in the church and the ministry and all that which we really appreciate when you do it <laughs> <laughs> yes I do but, um, but you know just that um you know that that's our purpose you know like last night i had juliana i asked her is there anything you want to tell god and she goes i love this answer <laughs> she goes god i love you you're in my heart even though you're 162 miles away <laughs> So apparently God lives 162 miles from Morocco, Indiana. I don't know which direction. Which, is that how where Aunt Rosie lives? Aunt Rosie, 162? No. Okay. So, you know, she's getting the concept. And, you know, and so it feels good, even though I've, you know, I've said, you know, oh, God lives in your heart, but she is getting, she's getting open to it and she's getting the, the, the basics, you know, yes. of it. And, I, and we had a couple people respond, I think, actually with their answer, kind of coming from one of your last WM meetings about the vessels. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, look at that. Something you said stuck with somebody. Excellent. Even though you tell me that I never... Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that being said, we want to thank everyone who... Um, who watched tonight, who logged in and watched, and those who may watch later on tonight or tomorrow, we thank you. We pray for you. God bless you. We'll Don't... cover the other piece later. 
Yes, we, we've only got two of the seven Ps. There's, there's another. We're, we're going to have church again next Wednesday. So we're not done yet, but we're done for tonight. Be continued. Jane's like, I hate that when ministers say there's five points, they give four, and then they do an altar call. <laughs> What's the fifth point? It's the cliffhanger. It keeps them coming back. <laughs> yeah, it's like the last episode of a, of a television show before when the season ends. Okay. They're bringing you back next season. Yeah. Yeah, leave them in suspense. <laughs> but that being said, um, we want to thank everyone who logged in and watched with us tonight. Um, God bless you. We love you. Uh, real quick, Roger Davenport, uh, we all have a purpose. I believe it is to fulfill as well. That is absolutely correct. That is absolutely correct. Um, don't forget Friday night, um, Jehovah Java, myself with Charles Walters, um, talk about Walters Ministries and what all, how God's using them internationally, not just here in America, but internationally. Um, everyone else, thank you. God Sunday. bless you. Do what? Sunday. Oh, su yeah, Sunday, <laughs> Drive-In Church for Mother's Day. Drive-In Church for Mother's Day. Um, Jane, will you close us with a word of prayer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we can come together and uh, learn of your word, Lord. Lord, just uh, bless this uh, study that we've been doing, Lord. We just pray that it will you know, come into our hearts and minds, Father, during the week start to recognize the transitional transitional seasons in our lives father and that you will uh, lead guide us through this in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. thank you for watching god bless <laughs>